Hello everyone, welcome back. In the last presentation, we have seen the insert and update DML commands. In this presentation, we will focus on delete and select DML commands. We know SQL has four different sub-languages, the DDL, DML, DCL and TCL. We are now in DML. We have already seen about the theoretical aspects of DML elaborately in the previous lectures. Basically, this DML has four commands, insert, update, delete and select. We have already seen about insert and update in the previous lecture. Now let's focus on the delete command. Delete is also a DML command for deleting the rows. Since this is also going to delete the data part only, this is also a DML command. Let's see the syntax now. The syntax is delete from table name where condition. Just see this is also like an English statement. Delete from table where this condition. Let's see an example. Delete from student where id is equal to 101. Suppose if we have a table like this, where id and name are the two columns in this table student. And what command we are issuing? Delete from student where id is equal to 101. So id is equal to 101 is matching only in this place. So this particular row is going to be deleted. So once this command is executed, then 101 entry will be vanished or deleted. Because this is the only row that is matching for this condition. Let's now see another example. Delete from student where name is equal to Neso Academy. Suppose if we have a table like this where ID 101 is having the name Neso Academy and ID 103 is also having Neso Academy. Now if we execute this query, then obviously two rows will be deleted because two rows are matching, isn't it? Here also Neso Academy, here also Neso Academy. And we are referring name is equal to Neso Academy. So name is equal to Neso Academy is matching in two rows. So these two rows will be deleted and we'll be having only one row which is 102 Sujit Singh in the final table. We will see one more example for delete. Delete from student where id is not equal to 20. This is one of the ways to represent not equal to in SQL. Suppose if we have a table like this, id is 101, 102 and 103 and we have some records here. Now what happens when we execute this command? id is not equal to 20. So obviously 101 is not equal to 20, 102 is not equal to 20 and 103 is not equal to 20. So obviously this command erases all the rows in the table because the condition is a not condition. ID is not equal to 20. So obviously all records are having ID not equal to 20. So this deletes all the data in the table. And that's why I told you we must be very careful in choosing the condition. Let's assume we have all entries in the ID column which is obviously not equal to 20. Let's say we have 1000 records and all 1000 records where the ID value is not equal to 20. When we issue this command, all the rows will be deleted. Now this is equivalent to truncate, isn't it? Where all the rows are deleted but still this table structure exists. And delete will also not delete the table structure because it is going to directly deal with the data not the structure of the table. Because delete is a DML command. The difference between delete DML command and truncate DDL command is truncate will be faster than delete. So we are done with the third DML command, the delete. Now we will focus on the last one, the select. In some conventions, select will be under DQL, the data query language. But here I am using select under DML itself. Let's see the syntax. Select column 1, comma, column 2, up to any number of columns, whatever you want. You list all the columns here from keyword, table name, where, condition. We'll see one example. Select if you want all columns to be listed. Suppose if your table contains 10 columns and if you want all 10 columns, simply select star from student. I am quoting asterisk symbol as star here. So asterisk or star, it lists all the columns. Suppose if you have a table like this, student table contains 5 attributes or 5 columns. ID, name, age, salary and gender. When we execute this SQL query, then all values are listed. So we will be getting the view that contains all the values of the table because we have used star here and also if you note here, we have not specified any condition. So all records, all rows and all columns are displayed. Let's see another example for select. In this case, we are going to select all the columns. Star represents all the columns. Can you see here? Because this is the portion that represents columns. So we are going to select all the columns from student table where gender is equal to F. It means I am going to list all the female candidates. Suppose if the student table contains ID, name, age, salary and gender and only one record is matching here because only one entry for F against gender. So when we execute this SQL query, 
So we get all columns because what we have mentioned here, asterisk or star. So all columns, ID, name, age, salary and gender, everything will be listed. But only for one row, which is 103, Alia, 25, 35,000 and F, which is this particular row. So from this, we can understand that asterisk represents all columns. Suppose if we want specified columns. Say, I want to select ID, name, age from student where salary is greater than 60,000. Suppose if we have a table like this, just compare this query with this student table. I'm going to select only three attributes or three columns. What are they? ID, name, age. We may have n number of columns in the original table, but in the view, I want only ID, name and age. I mean ID, name and age, only these three columns. And I also specified a condition, salary is greater than 60,000. So we are going to check, is salary greater than 60,000? No. Is salary greater than 60,000? No, this is 60,000. This will be matching only if salary is greater than or equal to 60,000. So this is also no. And this is yes because 75,000 is greater than 60,000 and 68,000 is greater than 60,000. So the outcome of executing this particular DML query is going to be two rows, 103, 104, right? 103 and 104, but not all columns, only these three columns, ID, name and age, ID, name and age. Remember, the original table will not be affected because of executing the select query. The original table will be affected if you insert or delete or update. But select is just a view. The original table is not at all going to be affected. Whatever we want to select, we will be seeing that in the output. So this select is very much essential for projecting the information on the front end. Suppose you want money and you are approaching the nearest ATM. When you insert the card, your information is fetched from the card and then your particular information is taken from the database and it is shown on the screen of the ATM machine. The communication between the front end and the back end is going to be these kind of SQL queries only because database softwares respond to only SQL queries. So front end wants some data from the back end, supplies the SQL queries to the back end and back end responds with the required information as a table to the front end and front end displays that in such a way that the end user can understand. Because we can't expect the end user to supply SQL queries to the database and get back the result, which is practically not possible. Anyway, as an end user, we are not bothered about these activities because we want our job to be done as easy as possible. At the same time, as an end user, we don't want to bother about the programming level complexities. The programmers will supply what happens when user performs that particular action, what kind of SQL queries to be sent to the database in order to fetch the information. Let's take a real-time example. We want to withdraw some money from our account through ATM. In that case, update statement should be sent because after withdrawal, new balance should be updated into the account. So the front end, what we see on the ATM machine will send a query like this. Update table name set balance equal to the new balance where account number equal to our account number. Once the database receives these kind of update queries, it updates the database and sets the new balance so that the next transaction will have the new balance reflected. In case we want to see what's our balance. In that case, select query should be sent to the database. Let's see another example. Select ID, name and age from student where salary is greater than or equal to 60,000. So the condition here is salary is greater than or equal to 60,000. And I'm going to retrieve only three records, ID, name and age. If the input or the original table is like this, and what will be the output of this? I request you to pause this video for a while and guess the right answer. And the answer for this query is going to be ID, name and age, which is ID, name and age. And we'll be getting three rows. Though we have four rows in the table, we get three rows because this 50,000 only is not matching here. Salary 50,000 is greater than or equal to 60,000 is false. Whereas 60,000 is greater than or equal to 60,000 is true. 75,000 is greater than or equal to 60,000 is true. And 68,000 is greater than or equal to 60,000 is true. So we are able to get three rows. And before we conclude, let's see the last command. Suppose in the view, you want to change the order. In the original table, we have ID first. ID as the first column followed by name, age, salary and the gender column. But in the view, you want to change the order. That is also possible. Just see the next example. In this example, I want a name first, age second and ID third from student table. Suppose if the original table is like this. And I am retrieving only these three columns, name, age and ID. 
and I have not mentioned any condition here. So what do you mean by this? All rows will be listed but only three columns. What are the three columns? Name, age and ID. Though the original table contains ID first, name second and age third, in the view we will be getting name, age and ID in this order because we have selected the records in this order. Remember, the original table will not be affected because of this. Because this is just a view level, just we are selecting. We are not at all updating the original table. I hope now you are able to understand insert, update, delete and select DML commands. I hope the session is informative. I'll see you in the next presentation and thank you for watching.